y'all will walk around and I'll be here. And you might say nobody in the heart. So we Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde. I'm live at Blessed Love Cultural Center. I am live at Blessed Love Cultural Center. I am live at Blessed Love Cultural Center. I'm calling on all my Los Angeles Africans to pull on up. I'm calling on all my Los Angeles Africans to pull on up. I will be speaking at seven o'clock. I will be speaking at seven o'clock until 8.30 and I will sign books from 8.30 until. I will be speaking at seven o'clock until 8.30 and I will be signing books from 8.30 until. The Prince is in the building. South Central pull up. Watts pull up. Compton pull up, Inglewood pull up, Long Beach pull up, Los Angeles pull up. The address, 1404 Vernon Avenue. The address, 1404 Vernon Avenue. Dr. Umar is in the building. They got the food, the stage. Opening acts are doing their thing right now. Opening acts are doing their thing right now. And then I will be up. So I'm backstage right now. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. The son of Ogun is in the building. And I'll be blessing the stage momentarily. But I want to clear something up. A lot of folks been sending me some posts from our brother, the rapper Game, who's based out here on the West Coast in Los Angeles. Shout out to the Game. Shout out to the Game. I understand he expressed some disagreement with me pointing out the fact that I thought it was a contradiction that LeBron James and his beautiful wife allowed their son to take a snow bunny to the prom. So here's what I will say to my brother the game. First of all, I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm not interested in a war and I'm not interested in a war of words. I don't want to go through what my North Philadelphia brother Meek Mill went through with the game. I said I do not want to go through what my North Philadelphia Meek Mill my North Philadelphia brother Meek Mill went through with the game. I don't I have a need to prove my manhood to nobody, and I don't have a need to convince anybody of my manhood. So this is not going to be no East Coast, West Coast. It's not even going to be a beef. The brother expressed his opinion, and I'm going to express mine again for all to hear, including the game. As a revolutionary Pan-African nationalist, as some Someone who is committed to the ultimate liberation of African people, I reserve the right to critique the behavior of any African. And I reserve the right to constructively criticize the behavior of any African if I deem that behavior to be in direct contradiction of what we as black people and particularly we as black men need to be doing. LeBron James is a man who I respect. I think he's been a great role model for black boys. I don't consider him to be a political activist at all, but I do consider him to be a good role model for black boys. And because so many young black men look up to LeBron James, rightfully so. He has a black wife. He stayed out of trouble. He's went straight from high school to the NBA and he has kept his image and his life squeaky clean.
He is definitely an exemplary black man. With that being said, he is not perfect. And with that being said, like all humans, we engage in contradictory behavior from time to time. And it doesn't hurt that somebody exposes that contradictory behavior. I did not destroy. I did not disrespect. I did not malign LeBron James. I did not cancel him. I said it was unacceptable, irresponsible, and politically dysfunctional for a man of his stature with the amount of black boys who look up to him to allow his son to take a white girl on the prom. If game disagrees with that, I respect his right to disagree, but I am not backing down from my position. I don't scratch unless I itch. I don't dance unless I like the music. It was irresponsible to do that because the unspoken message the unspoken message, the unspoken message in LeBron James deciding or allowing his 17 year old son to take a white girl to the prom. Let's talk about the unspoken messages. What are the unspoken messages that are communicated to black boys and black girls by Bronny James taking a white girl to the prom? Let me give you one unspoken message. One unspoken message is that although LeBron James may have a black wife, he does not have a problem with his son having a white wife. Although LeBron James has a black wife, he does not have a problem with his son having a white wife. That's one unspoken message. Another unspoken message to black girls all over the country is I'm still not good enough. I'm still not good enough. Even LeBron James doesn't have a problem with black men dating outside the race. And for anyone to hint at saying his son taking a white girl to the prom is a non-issue is absolutely a fool or politically uneducated. Everything you do is a political statement. Everything you do is a political message. Everything you do has political repercussions. We are living in a country where educated black men date and marry outside their race more than the men of all other races put together as a percentage of the population. I know that. You know that. LeBron James knows that. I am not discounting the good things he's done, nor am I dismissing him as a role model for black boys. I do not have a problem with LeBron James, but the decision to let his son take a white girl to the prom reinforces an unspoken message that black women and black girls are insufficient to be the queens for black men and that is a dangerous message and someone as public and as popular and as prominent as LeBron James should have exercised better decision making skills we all make mistakes we are all adults this is not a cancellation I'm simply saying that it was wrong that is still that man's son. He still lives in his home. He is still responsible for his behavior. It was wrong. Just like it was wrong for LeBron James's good friend Dwayne Wade to let his childhood son make the decision that he wanted to spend the rest of his life as a girl. Dwayne Wade was wrong. Gabrielle Union was wrong. LeBron James was wrong for letting his son take a white girl to the prom. That is my position. If our good brother, the game, wants to disagree with me, he can disagree with me. He has his opinion, but I have mine. And I'm not backing down from my, my opinion for nobody. I'm not the only person to post that picture. He posted it himself. He is a celebrity as a child and his father is a celebrity one of the most prominent celebrities in the world so that picture of lebron james's son and his snow bunny prom date 
was already seen by tens of millions of people all around the world before Dr. Umar posted it. So let's not be disingenuous about this and try to make it look like I somehow got my hands on the picture that the world had not already seen. Let's stop being ridiculous. Now, if the gang thinks it's okay for black boys to date outside of their community, when only one out of every four black women is getting married, if the gang thinks it's okay for black boys to marry white girls, even though most black women will never get married, that's his opinion. If the gang thinks it's perfectly fine for black men to not be loyal to black women, to be committed to black women, and to be committed to building up strong, independent black families, that is his opinion. Like I said, we're not going to go back and forth. We're not going to have a conflict. We're not going to have a problem. That's my brother. I respect him. We got a difference of opinion, and I'm going to leave it at that. Now, with that being said, with that being said, brothers and sisters, I am here at Blessed Love Community Center. I am excited. I am happy. I am in good spirits. I am in high spirits. And I'm about to drop the Marcus Garvey grenade on the stage. It is now 653. It is now 653. It is now 653. I'm hoping you're on your way. Long Beach pull up. Compton pull up. Watts pull up. South Central pull up. L.A. pull up. Southern California pull up. Because in a few minutes, I'm going to take the stage and we're going to talk about the problems of the black community. And we're going to talk about them honestly and realistically. Because one thing about me, I speak the truth whether you like it or not. One thing about me, I'm going to hold the line for our ancestors whether you like it or not. One thing about me, I'm not interested in being a I'm not interested in getting a stamp of approval by the white power structure. One thing about me is I stand on principle. I don't care what's popular. I don't care who is popular. I said I don't care what's popular. I don't care who is popular. I care about the liberation of African people. And if you care about the liberation of African people, we can have a conversation. If you don't care about the liberation of African people, that's all right. We can respect each other, agree to disagree, and go our separate ways. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism at Blessed Love Cultural Center, 1404 Vernon Avenue. 1404 Vernon Avenue. I'm chilling backstage with the ancestors right now. I'm chilling backstage with the ancestors right now. Getting my energy together. Getting my spirit together. Getting my alpha male power together so I can do what I do better than anybody on the planet earth and that is grab the microphone and raise the African energy of my brothers and sisters. That's right. I said I do what I do better than anybody walking this planet and that is raising the consciousness of African people. So this is Dr. Umar Ifatunde signing out. Blessed Love Cultural Center. We are in the building. 1404 Vernon Ave. I'm about to hit the stage, bless the mic, and honor our brother, El Hodge, Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X, because tonight is about honoring our brother, El Hodge, Malik El Shabazz, on his 97th Earth Day. This is the Prince, 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Peace and Pan-Africanism.